So far, we've established every person has some truth or light about God. That was proposition number one. And last week, we began talking about proposition number two. Light refused increases darkness. Let me demonstrate. Here's a person who looks around and sees creation and says, there's got to be a God. I have a sense of right and wrong. There's got to be somebody who put all that together. Somebody has to be out there. If they turn towards the light about God, that's great. This scripture says people have suppressed the truth. They've rejected the truth about God and turned from the light and moved into darkness. When you turn your back on the light, you go further and further into darkness. Their foolish hearts were darkened. Let me tell you something about spiritual truth. You use it or you lose it. You use spiritual truth when it's revealed to you or you lose it. You can't take truth about God and put it in your pocket and save it for a rainy day and say, you know, I think I'll save it for a while. Truth about God's like an ice cube on a hot summer day. If you don't use it, it'll be gone pretty soon. This passage is talking about people who had the truth about God, but they refused it and they moved into darkness. Once your heart turns from God, the next step is wickedness, evil. Then Paul describes two ways. He says there's two ways this rejection of truth is manifested. First, in idol worship. Look at verse 23. It says, These people exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images, idols, made to look like mortal man and birds and animals and reptiles. Have you ever wondered how in the world people could bow down before a statue or before a stick or before a bird or even before a bug? People around the world worship all those things. How could they do that? The Bible says it's because they've turned from the truth about God and they went into darkness. So their foolish hearts became darkened and they started worshiping all these things. Those of you who've been to India know that starvation is a terrible problem and thousands are starving. Well, at the same time, there are fat cows literally roaming free in the streets. They're not eating the cows because the cows are worshiped. How can that be? How can a person die of hunger when right outside there's a cow? They're worshiping the cow. And the problem is people all around this planet have begun worshiping the created things rather than the creator. That's the next logical step whenever you turn from the light and go into darkness. You start worshiping created things. And you may think you're glad we're not like that in America today. I mean, we're not worshiping statues. Instead, we bow down at the altar of success. We kneel at the shrine of a career. We worship houses and land and possessions and all those created things rather than the creator. We better be careful we don't look at God in our smugness and say, God, at least we're not into adultery. The New Testament says covetousness or greed is adultery. If there's anything or anyone in your life more important than God, that's adultery. That's the first way that darkness manifests itself. He goes on to say that the rejection of truth has also manifested itself in sexual immorality. Where did sexual immorality come from? Because people rejected the truth about God. Look at verse 24. God gave them over in the sinful desires of their hearts to sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies with one another. He takes this further in verses 26 and 27 where he talks about homosexuality. The Bible talks about how sexual immorality is just one of the ways the darkened heart manifests itself. How can there be the sexual immorality we have today? It's nothing new. The culture Paul preached and ministered to was at least as immoral as ours today. We sometimes think that it's worse today than it's ever been, but really it's not. It's always been there. If you visit the city preserved by the volcanic ash from Mount Vesuvius eruption, the city of Pompeii, the ash 
covered the whole city and packed it and preserved it in ash. Archaeologists who've uncovered it know that there are sections of Pompeii that are so obscene and so pornographic that they're closed to the public. That was the culture Paul was writing about. It's the same today in America. The reason there's so much sexual immorality today in America is simply because of what Paul's talking about here. People have turned from the light about God and they've gone deeper and deeper into darkness. That's proposition number two. Here's proposition number three. Light obeyed increases light. If you turn from the light, darkness increases. But if any person turns toward the light, they get more light and they get closer and closer to God. Next week, I want to give you some examples. Thank you, Lord, for light. Light that only comes from you, for you are the giver of life and light. And I pray that you would continue to reveal your light to us as we navigate these dark days, that we would cling to the light, embrace the light, that we would obey the light and hunger for the light, and that it might grow within us every day in Jesus' name. Let there be light. Open the eyes of the blind. Purify our hearts in your fire. Breathe in us, we pray. Jesus, have your